Well, Adobe has come up with a really great tool, and they used it writing, it's a Flex application, and I teach Flex in web services, but it's called Color or Cooler, and it's spelled K-U-L-E-R. So why don't you all go out to Cooler right now. If you log in, you can save your color schemes. And if you use other Adobe tools, like their conference tool or uh, Buzzword, which is a collaborative document, you can use the same login for all of those. So here's how Cooler works. You can go down here, and, and you don't have to register for this, but if you want to save your color scheme, you, you should register. But you go down, and you create on the Create button, and then you can select an image. So like I'm going to upload an image and let me go out and get the uh, Computer Careers logo. So here's the Computer Careers logo and then I can move these points around to the different colors that I want. So I want to get that blue. I maybe want a, a lighter blue. Oh, I just had it. There's a nice light blue. Here's my different golds. You can see my golds are really browns. And so this is my five-part color scheme. You can see it here along the bottom. And then if I'm logged in, then I can save this color scheme. So you can take your client's logo and you can build a color scheme so the colors they have in their logo will automatically be on the page. Now this is a really really dark page so I'm going to take one of these uh, browns I think the lighter brown and I'm going to change it into a, a, a lighter gray. Now this is the I've gone back to create from a color and this is the color wheel, and what you can do is you can pick the kind of color you want. So let's say I'm going to do a page in greens. Then here's the different greens, and I can make it lighter. And today's designs are definitely going to lighter colors. So stay as light as you can, and then you can move these out so I can have a broad range here. So I go to nice light, a nice dark color, so I have some contrast, and this is my medium colors. So I'd probably do my type either black or this dark green, or this, this green here. Now if you want a little more interest, you can go to analogous, and analogous, and that'll take you to joining colors. So here's a range of yellows, or I can go to yellows and oranges, and you can see how I can make my choices. I can also spread it out even more. So here I can go to blues and greens. And again, you can, you can make lighter or darker. Try to get some light shades in there. You don't want your pages too dark. If you go to triad, this is doing the mathematical of picking three colors from the color wheel. And you notice that the three colors are always the same distance apart. Now basically this is how our brain is wired so our brains are going to find that more pleasing than if you maybe picked these two colors and this third color right here that would be a little bit off. When people would go to that web page they'd have a sense that it wasn't quite right. By following these, these triads that are se separated equally around the color, then that gives people a sense of, of rightness, correctiveness. So when they see the web page, they say, oh, this feels good. This feels right. Or even if they don't say it, they, they still feel it unconsciously. <coughs> these, here you can get to shades, so I can look at shades of any color. And again, do you see how I head to the grays, to the more intense? Keep in mind, subtle, as opposed to subtle, and then this is more subtle. A nice palette to select from, and then these are the only colors you use on your web page. Now, if you have a series of, of photos that are similar, like here a logo, but even pictures of people with certain uh, 
colored clothes on or something, you can match those colors and get a color scheme from that. So either way. Oh, that's a good question, Deb. Um, do, you want, do you want to be sensitive to the web safe colors? What's happened in the last few years is the monitors have gotten so good that we don't worry about web safe colors anymore. They use what De De Deb is referring to is, we used to, was it 264? I think, I think our monitors were limited to about 264 colors uh, most commonly. And if we chose colors that were outside of that range, then it, they wouldn't show up correctly on some people's monitors. So there was a, there was a selection of, color, of web safe colors or monitor safe colors that we, that we used. Um, that's kind of disappeared, Deb. We don't need to worry about that anymore because monitors are, are, have improved so much over the years. Like this. Oh, and then this, the last piece is down here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. And Adobe is stuck back in the 1990s. They're still designing with white letters against black. And if you look down here, you can see the hex code. See, I can't even highlight. There's the hex code. These are the codes you're going to use on your web page to designate your colors. These are the codes that you're going to be putting on your color swatch. So as part of your project work, you're going to want to figure out your color scheme and then you're going to want to do a screenshot of e either these five colors here or the five colors in the wheel and then you'll use a photo editor such as GIMP and you'll put the hex code right across here. And this will have this hex code, this will have this hex code. This is a, a obnoxious color scheme. Let me find a, a better one. There we go. So each of these has a hex code. You would put the hex code and then you would print that out and use this as a reference as you build your page. So when you need a dark green, and I do, I need a, one dark green. When you need a dark green, then you would use this hex code. If you needed a light pale background, you would use this hex code. And this would be your reference chart. So does everybody have a feel of, of how you can use color? Again, you're going to take a screenshot of these five color swatches, and then you're going to put the hex code so you can read them on top of those. <coughs>